Hey, I'm Ava Gollinger. I'm a Venezuelan American lawyer um, and writer. In the year 2003, I started an investigation about the U.S. role in coup against President Chavez in April 2002 and ongoing destabilization attempts and have written a book on the first sort of um, information that I've received in this investigation called the Chavez Code. The Venezuelan state, at the very least, is showing, or is, is sort of showing, that it is possible for groups, nations, to oppose the global order and get away with it. And so the current global order, I think, is unacceptable. The, the actual consequences for the future and for the current living people imposed by today's global order is unacceptable, just simply unacceptable. And so any example which shows that the global order does not have to be, that there is an alternative, is important. Venezuela is changing the map completely, not just in Latin America, but around the world. Venezuela has, and particularly President Chavez's leadership, has opened the doors for other nations to start advancing forward to elect more progressive, um, socially oriented governments and leaders. I mean, it was really, it's really been since Chavez was elected that, you know, we've had Lula in Brazil, uh, Kirchner in Argentina, Tabaré Vázquez in Uruguay, and now of course Evo Morales in Bolivia. And, and there may be changes in other nations because in 2006 there are elections in about seven different countries in Latin America. So Venezuela is not imposing in any means its model on anybody. Um, but it certainly has created a new vision that a lot of other peoples and now official states are sharing, and that certainly is a threat to, to the existence of U.S. domination in Latin America and possibly throughout the world. You know, there are, there are strategic interests in Venezuela. I mean, there's geographical interests in the sense that it's the port of South America, um, you know, it borders important nations, and I mean, it's not just oil, there are tremendous resources all throughout, you know, the Amazon region, the eastern part of the country, mineral resources, aluminum, you know, even uranium, gold, all, all different kinds of, of those resources. And also, of course, yeah, I mean, this is the first time, and that's why the United States government has said that Venezuela represents the most serious threat since communism in the Soviet Union, because there we're talking about idealism. It's a threat of an ideological model that has been picked up, you know, by other other nations and communities that share, you know, the, these same similar perceptions and perspectives of, you know, not just Chavez, but the people of Venezuela. And definitely, I mean, it's the first sustainable model, possibly, that could come up and against the U.S. neoliberal model, capitalist model, and actually work. Although, you know, no other country in the world has the same opportunities Venezuela has by having its own vast natural energy resources and other resources and agricultural resources, you know, to develop and, and Venezuela has both. You know, they have everything they need to be a self-sufficient country. No other nation could do that. So the, the planet is now being driven in a direction that most of its occupants don't want it to be driven in by a small group of people who take decisions completely divorced from the wishes of the rest of the, the people, the billions. So we're basically passengers in a bus, like the planet's population is like passengers in a bus being driven by a small, very small crowd of drivers who are taking the bus where they think it should go, whether or not we like it.